um, this drug trial we're looking at, 5-azacitidine. Right now we're looking at the protein expression levels. And we'll uh, end up uh, with, with clinical Dr. manifestations. Dr. We model neurotrauma in vitro using flexible electron Bio uh, active molecules such as exosomes. We normally try to activate the supraspinal pathways because the motor... How hip movement and motor control contributed to the expression of pain in people with femoral acetabular impingement. Is this too specific? <laughs> There's just so much brilliant thinking that goes on here. And medicine is complicated, so you need a bunch of smart people. We have a wide variety of scientific disciplines in this building. We have cell biologists, we have electrical engineers, we have prosthetic fitters, we have people tracking eyeball movement to try to understand how brains work. We have people scanning the brains to see how they work. We have people trying to make wheelchairs drive by themselves so patients who can't drive them can get a little bit of help. The range is huge. I want to walk through this doorway. I want to open my mind. I want to pledge my allegiance to all I can find. My job is to make our patients better using science. And we will use whatever kind of scientist is required to address that particular problem. And that's why you see a lot of variety in the building of tools, of people, of equipment. And the key is they are all focused on making the patients better. I had a normal pregnancy. Everything was fine. Um, I had a, a healthy baby and um, we found through an MRI that he had um, an MCA stroke in utero. With that, he of course developed CP because he was without oxygen. And our first thought was we have to go to Chicago. So cerebral palsy is caused by a primary uh, insult or malformation of the brain just before or after birth. So uh, the muscle stem cells uh, in cerebral palsy do not uh, grow muscle properly. Uh, the goal of my lab is to develop new uh, drug or stem cell therapy that can help uh, to regrow or to maintain muscle functions in children with cerebral palsy. So our idea is to use already approved uh, agent or drug, 5 uh, to uh, patients with cerebral palsy and see whether it will improve uh, their muscle functions and their uh, movement. There are thousands of drugs out there that are already in use that have multiple uses. Why don't we study the drugs and use them on our patients as appropriate? We can make those changes in our patients on the weeks and months timescale instead of years, decades, and never. I want to learn a completely new language, one I don't understand. I want to help someone lost, someone helpless, with the strength of my hand. Um, I lost the left hand from a firework accident. Um, I ended up finding out later that I broke every finger in my right hand as well. Uh, and then that was a slow recovery process of finding how to do things with one hand. So what we're doing is we're developing these really simple, easy to use, and very effective steering systems for bionic arms and legs. We don't have to teach the person how to use the device. The device learns from the person how it should operate. When I first started going to Shirley Ryan Ability Lab for uh, research studies, eventually I got the, the ability to uh, try out and research a uh, robotic hand. We want people to just reach in and grab an object or, or kind of approach a set of stairs or a curb or a bridge and, and just do it in stride um, so that, you know, it's just effortless for the person. That, that's the goal. The revolution of the earth around the sun is the perfect lesson of how it should be. So if I cannot learn to journey I think by bringing clinicians and researchers together, you are taking all of the aspects and all of the potential um, to improve the quality of life for individuals. And when that happens, 
when you have both clinicians and researchers that have a passion for improving the lives of individuals and improving outcomes, it just grows exponentially. I think that's one of the unique aspects in being part of an institution such as this, is that I see clinical problems around me and I can develop unique translatable solutions to those problems through my research and then feed that back to my patients almost immediately. Because we share a space, I had the experience of a researcher just coming up to me one day and said, hey, what are you doing over there? How do you really know that they're using the muscles that you want them to? Um, and I said, I don't actually. So with that, we said, well, why don't we study it? Um, so now I can provide patients some feedback on a screen um, so that they can see how much they're moving um, or if they're moving the right muscle that I'm asking them to. Sensors are used in our hospital to be able to monitor our patients from admissions to discharge and then maybe later in the home and community, giving our clinician a dashboard to view how the patient progresses. Those who journey can easily understand The more they see, the more they'll learn, the more that they will be So this I swear to you, and this I swear So I don't really um, really think of Adam as someone that has one hand um, because I'm just very used to Adam being able to do everything that anyone's boyfriend or husband does. He's been blessed with this robot hand now. Um, he really has been able to hold on to who he is and you know continue to enjoy the same type of hobbies and same accomplishments that he did in the past. Uh, I do feel like I'm part of something bigger, that through my work and trial that somebody down the road will be able to use this and hopefully make it even better or do things that I didn't even think I could do. Your worry as a parent and then the fact when a child needs additional help and you think, well, is this is there ever going to be anything else? And the idea that it's already possibly happening um, in, in the future is here sooner than you expect. It's unbelievable. It's the neatest thing in the world.